today to help raise awareness and also head to the hedge cliff. lane came about as a means of enclosing your animals before there was stop fencing, barbed wire and electric fencing. You'd have finished the threshing and the harvesting and then the guys would have gone out with their axes and they would have laid hedges from September through to March and at the same time they'd have done, done the ditches. This is a grass hook. It's uh, chamfered one side and when you sharpen it you have the chamfer and you take that off of a cigar stone they call it because it's shaped like a cigar and then you just take the burrs off of that side so it's nice like a razor and what we use this for basically is going along clearing out the bottom of the hedge then when we come to the laying we use something like this you've got two tools in one here this side is like having a small axe for doing the pleaching on the small stuff when i've pleached it and laid the hedge over i will use this side to knock off the hills You've got the bark and then underneath it you've got the cambium layer, the layer which is actually active in taking the nutrients up the stem. So you need to leave a layer of that and the bark and that brings the nutrients up in the normal manner, up, up through here and keeps this bit alive. Uh, when we cut this off at an angle so that it sheds the, um, the water and then this will promote new growth from down here, get lots of shoots coming up and the whole thing forms a nice sort of living mesh. We always lay uphill, um, so the sap will rise. This part here is known as the hill. What tends to happen over time is that the, this wound will heal and it'll start to grow around over the edges a little bit. Hazel is not covered in thorns, but it tends to make a hedge, which is a lot of sticks. When you lay thorn, you get that nice big solid square hedge and it interlocks better, so it makes a better stock-proof fence. Field maple and spindle, not hard to lay, but they can be quite brittle and you can lose pleachers. Pleaching is common to all of the hedgerow stars because that way you keep a living hedge, which is the object of all of the, of the stars. The Welsh, the Yorkshire, the Midland, uh, South of England, uh, Hampshire, Somerset, all of them. They, they're all trying to keep a living uh, hedge going uh, in their particular style. What we're trying to do is actually interlock it. We've lost hundreds and hundreds of miles of hedge since the Second World War, when the dry was to increase food production, get, you know, get rid of these pointless hedges and plough it all up and grow food. But now people are realising that that possibly wasn't the wisest thing to have done. And so there is a lot more emphasis on keeping hedges that are there and in fact replanting hedges. Most of the hedge lane that, that we do is predominantly from an aesthetic or a conservation point of view. You normally work on your own laying, laying a hedge or if it's one or two of you contracting you'd lay that stretch and then then your colleague would go on further down um, and start another bit. The stakes you can use hazel or chestnut it goes down the centre of the hedge about every 18 inches and they will be holding the pleachers in forming part of the stock proof element of the hedge the binders will move the stakes, uh, not, not off centre, but there'd be a little bit of play. This is what they call a beetle. It's cut out of a piece of wood. It's, this is actually a piece of holly. And you can see that's where the stem of the tree grew up. The branch is coming off. He's seeing that bit. He's fancy that is his handle. And this will be used like this for knocking in. And when you knock down the binders, the other way around. Once the stakes are in there, put the binders on. Now these are hazel um, and see just being trimmed up to ensure that as we spine them around the stakes that there's no notches on there which are going to get caught up on the stakes. With South of England we start with three or four binders, one behind the stake and one in front and work our way along. The top two binders here on the second stake go behind the stake but beneath the top two binders and then it will come round the front of the next stake and over these binders, therefore locking them down nice and tight. And then that will go behind that next stake in front and it'll be woven along. So the next one will go into the next stake there, like that. So go in there, round the front of that stake, and then, and by doing that, you're locking all the hedge down. 
Not only does it look nice, it locks the hedge down. And this is the bit as people drive along, they really notice. This style of binding is particular to the south of England. We're lucky in the south of England, we've got access to, to predominantly hazel or willow or birch. And there's a lot of coppice woodland that's about. Once we put the binders in, knock them down, we then start to drive the stakes in. And that gives the whole thing some solidity. Gary's able to manoeuvre the stakes about, get them in line, ensure they're doing the job they're meant to. And when the binders and the stakes start to go, the hedge will have grown up, the new growth will be coming from the bottom, the stakes and the binders which are performing a function now won't be required. You get a permanent stock proof hedge which doesn't rot out, not like a you know, softwood post and rail fence. There are hedges that are hundreds and hundreds of years old, uh, way, way beyond the normal lifespan of the, of the individual plants that are involved in the hedge. 